Hello everybody. Yesterday was the big day for the all Yellowstone fans out there. The biggest Western series of the recent years. Yellowstone has left us in a highly ambiguous situation for more than a year and a half of the season pre finale that shocked us all. The finale episode of the third installment of the series ended with a major cliffhanger that puts three of the main characters of the show in a fatal danger. Naturally, fans went mad and multiple theories spread throughout the internet, trying to figure out what had happened. Thankfully, we got our answers on a beautiful Sunday, and we were all wrong in our theories. The title of the episode was Half the Money. It started from where Season 3 left. We saw Rip finding John and trying to rescue him, while Casey managed to survive and go after some of the attackers together with the sheriff. Then, we see Beth going out from the blasted building, covered in blood and heavy burns. People try to reach her to help, as she only asks for a cigarette. As she takes a sniff from her cigarette, we see the anger through her eyes, even when she is probably in heavy pain. In the meantime, we go back to the Yellowstone Ranch, in which Monica is attacked by a mysterious man. Thankfully, Tate comes just in time and shoots at him. Monica and Tate manage to leave the house, but realize that the entire ranch is in attack, as Jimmy is suffering on the ground. We once again move back to Casey, as he goes after the attackers and gets in a clash against them. Despite managing to stop them, he gets heavily injured. At the same time, Rip finally manages to transfer John into a helicopter ambulance and goes to the ranch to figure out what the hell is going on. The ranch welcomes him in a tragic mood, as the only thing that is left but the cabin is the ruins. Then, we have a brief visit to the past, back in 1893, when the Yellowstone Territory first became the belonging of the Duttons. The Duttons of the 19th century, a father with his two sons, comes across with the Indians, who are struggling under the winter circumstances since they lost their territory to white colonialists. Despite doubting each other's intentions, the two sides start to talk and realize that they can have regular communication without the necessity to apply to the violence. The head of the Indian tribe demands to bury his father's body to the territory, and the Dutton accepts his demand. Realizing that the tribe is hungry, he also gives them beef. Following this brief interval, we come back to the modern times. Two months after the attacks took place, we see Beth and John seeing each other for the first time in the hospital after being attacked. John seems unaware of what exactly happened and starts to ask questions. Beth informs him that whatever happened to John happened to all of them. Since John's health is still at the critical stage, the doctors make him sleep with drugs. Then, Beth meets a young boy at the garden of the hospital. They have an interesting, funny and yet, also somehow tragic dialogue. Since the fathers of both are having a struggle to survive in the hospital, they quickly build a friendship over this common ground. Then the father of the kid dies and Beth condolences him as he swears at his father for leaving him all alone in the world. The next scene takes place in a casino as an annoying white man playing blackjack. At one point, out of the delusional feeling of power caused by winning over and over again, he confesses that he shot John Dutton. Naturally, he is being taken away and questioned heavily. In fact, he is even tortured to come clean about the reality of who attacked the Duttons. However, we didn't get a clear answer from him this episode about the details of the attack, despite knowing that he has been used in the process. Then, Beth comes to the hospital to take John back home. Before leaving the hospital, they see Jimmy, still alive but taking physical therapy. They move to the ranch, which is being heavily protected by the security forces due to the attacks. At the ranch, we see John struggling to get used to the fact that he is still ill and has to be patient to recover. However, he refuses to accept any help and fires his personal nurse, pretending as if nothing has happened to him, while in reality him being alive is a miracle. John finally comes back together with Casey as well. However, Casey also refuses to let him know what had happened exactly. In the meantime, Beth, who is clearly having some anger management issues following the attack, pays a visit to Jamie's office, which is arguably the most iconic scene of episode 1. She first passive aggressively attacks him with his childhood toys, then implies that he is the one behind the attacks. Jamie looks surprised by the accusations and tries to refuse them. However, Beth insists and tells him that she has been waiting for the past two months for John to get better so that she can finally make this visit to Jamie. She also underlines multiple times that she will kill Jamie as he ruined their family. The rest of the episode revolves around John thanking Yellowstone staff for being there, while Beth and Rip's bond remain as strong as ever. 
By the time we assume the episode will come to an end, we saw Rip attacking Warp Morris with a snake and possibly killing him. Throughout the episode, we watch the Duttons trying to come back to their senses after such a traumatizing series of attacks. Even though we didn't get clear answers on who did what and why, we finally got a deep breath by seeing that all the Duttons are alive and well. What did you think of the Yellowstone Season 4 premiere? Have you enjoyed the episode? Was it online with your expectations? Let us know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. Thank you for watching. See you soon.